Hi, this is Terry Kuti, and I am doing another video here in Chicago at Plastic Surgery The Medium with Dr. Manos Krasopolo from PRMA in San Antonio. So Dr. C, when I had my deep flap in 2014, I was in hospital for five days. Mm -hmm. I was on narcotics. Mm -hmm. I felt a little foggy headed. I felt like I was sleeping a lot because I had this self, what do you call it? The, the PCA? Yes, the thank button. you. That I had the button. Start feeling a little pain, hit the button. Mm -hmm. Out yeah. I'd go. Mm -hmm. I had a catheter in for five days and I gotta tell you that was my least favorite part. Was it in for five days, really? Yeah. Wow. It was. Yeah, Didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't either. And another really icky thing, mm -hmm. I didn't have solid food, I think, for, I think it was my second or second day, maybe. I got really tired of broth. Did you have, I, did you have nausea? Were you, were you, was that? No, I didn't. I didn't. That was well controlled for me. Doesn't sound like much fun. Well, it it was. I mean, I I had such a successful D. So let's just put that out there. But you know, I always tell women that recovery was not a cakewalk, but you get through it. The hardest part for me, I think, was laying in bed that many hours a day. That's what I didn't like about it. Um, and I thought if they bring me one more cup of broth, I was going to throw on their face. I was so happy to get my first plate. I've, I've tasted it. It's nasty. It, um, but now you have something new in place. Well, it's not really new, but I, I got to see new -ish. it. New-ish. New mm -hmm. I got to see it firsthand in April. I was doing some advocacy work, and I saw some of your patients. I walked down the hall to greet them, and I'm like, okay, you just had surgery yesterday. You don't have your catheter in and you're up walking around like I was like on day three or four. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. So, so if, yeah. I, I was so glad, I've heard about it, but I was so glad I got to see it no, it's in great. action. It's a great protocol, the ARAS protocol, Enhanced mm -hmm. Recovery After Surgery. That's mm -hmm. what ARAS stands for. Yeah. Um, so it's been described for many procedures, actually, not just, yes. not just breast reconstruction, but it has been described also specifically for uh, microsurgical breast reconstruction like the deep flap mm -hmm. and it's it's wonderful it's been a game changer mm -hmm. um, I could I saw that yeah, no it's really it's it's great so it's it's basically a protocol that starts before your surgery okay and it optimizes uh, nutrition it optimizes your pain control uh, during and after surgery, um, really speeds up the recovery process in, in many ways, and it avoids a lot of the narcotics that we used to be dependent on. So now, instead of having narcotics scheduled mm -hmm. as your main method of pain control, it's only used if the other stuff you're taking for pain isn't working, if you need an extra little bit of help, right? So. The process starts before surgery with a carbohydrate drink. I was just going to ask you to give the specifics. Yeah, so it used to be, you know, we used to tell people, oh, nothing to eat or drink after midnight. Right. And so now we know that if you give a, a heavy carbohydrate-laden drink, mm -hmm. um, then it prepares the body for surgery uh, a lot better, mm -hmm. uh, and you avoid the, the delayed onset of, of you know, your, your GI system, yes. your intestines working mm -hmm. after surgery, they, they start working a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Also, we limit the amount of fluid that we give during the surgery through the IV. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you don't swell, as, swell much as much because we know now that swelling isn't just what you can see externally. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not just your arms and legs and whatever that get a little bit puffy like mm -hmm. they used to, but also your your everything swells so even so your intestines swell yeah it's not putting pressure on all about that, that added fluid not right. putting pressure internally right okay and then what happens is that the that that swelling slows down the return of everything working so okay. your intestines are slower to come around so we used to 
you know, really take our time and getting moving you to a full diet. And yeah. Anyway, now we know that you don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. So this carbohydrate laden drink ahead of time really helps with that along with cutting down the fluid. So instead of really over hydrating patients like we used to a while back, now we just give patients the amount of fluid that they need um, rather, than, rather than overdoing it. Surgeons, you know, used to think that a lot of fluid was better. Uh -huh. Now we know that actually the fluid that the patient needs mm -hmm. is what they should be getting, not over hydrating them because over hydrating them just makes them swell and slows down the return of normal bodily functions so does does that have anything to do not to interrupt but does that have anything to do with having the catheter out earlier or no 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 okay it's it's just the internal pressure of the fluid mm -hmm. and so so that carbohydrate drink ahead of time sets the stage yep the fluid cutting back on the fluid during surgery mm -hmm. sets the stage and then afterwards um, in terms of fluid, we we would keep. I don't know if you remember, but you were on IV fluids for days. Yes, when you did it. Yes. Now we really we cut them down. We cut them back very very quickly. Yep. Um, so, and to the point where you're on a regular diet as soon as you can tolerate it. It's yeah. not It's not this prolonged process anymore. Yes, and that's what I noticed when I saw them coming down the hall. Yeah. I had multiple bags hanging off of my pole, and yeah. I looked. I'm like. They barely had anything. anything. Yeah. So um, the other thing we do with the ERAS protocol that we didn't do when you were there, mm -hmm. I think when you were there, we were still doing the pain, the pain ball, weren't we? You had a little. No, a little, I had that for my mastectomy okay. prior to seven months prior to you, that. but no, I didn't. So, so I now, didn't have that. Yeah. With so you. now we're doing um, blocks on the inside. Yes. Called tap blocks. Mm -hmm. And that's basically intraoperatively. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, we that basically allows us to inject long acting anesthetic mm -hmm. right over the nerves that uh. supply this area, mm -hmm. the, the lower tummy. Mm -hmm. And so that adds a level of pain control that we that patients didn't have before. Mm -hmm. That decreases the amount of pain medicine they need to take orally. The Oral pain regimen is completely different. Mm -hmm. It's we use Celebrex, which is a non-steroidal mm -hmm. drug, kind of like ibuprofen. Okay. Uh, we also use extra strength Tylenol. Okay. And we use gabapentin, low dose. Yeah. So those three things are scheduled around the clock, mm -hmm. and in our practice we do that for two weeks. Okay. And then you also have narcotics available in case you need them. Yes. For breakthrough pain. Okay. So those drugs on their own that I mentioned, they're not particularly, you know, big hitters, but the combination works phenomenally well. Okay. And so when you take out the narcotics from the equation, patients don't feel foggy anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't feel sleepy. You know, the, the PCA, the button you mentioned, yes. we haven't done that in years. Right. So a very rare event, someone mm -hmm. will have very, very high requirements. Yes. So I'm not going to say it never happens, mm -hmm. but it's exceptionally rare these days for it's us to put a PCA for, you know, give a patient a PCA. Yeah. Um, so uh, patients don't have the constipation that they would get, mm -hmm. you know, after surgery from the narcotics. Um, and that together with, oh, and they don't have the nausea either that narcotics can give you. Mm -hmm. So all those things together means that the patient is able to start eating quicker, they're more with it so they can get up and walk quicker. Uh, we take out the Foley catheter very quickly too. Um, they're not getting overhydrated, so mm -hmm. they don't need the catheter like we like they used to. Right. All that enables earlier mobilization so they, they can get up and walk sooner mm -hmm. and do more the first couple of days. And now our length of stay has come down. I mean, yours was five. It was also at a time when our out of state folks were staying say, an extra day. I was going to say I was day. out of state. Yeah. You know, now whether you're out of state or local, mm -hmm. um, I tell my patients you stay two days. So yeah. length of stay is now down to two days. That's the goal. Sometimes it ends up being three, mm -hmm. uh, but the goal is two days because anyone who is ready to go medically at mm -hmm. two days is going to have a much shorter recovery overall. So well, ARAS yeah. has been a game changer. Oh yeah, and and like I said, seeing it firsthand, mm -hmm. it was. 
a visual game changer for me too, just to be able to see those those mm -hmm. women yeah. a few days before. Yeah, it's a great protocol. I'm really glad we talked about this. I like to tell other women, and this actually happened. I've told other women, ask your doctor. Not everybody's practicing ARAS, we mm -hmm. know that. Mm -hmm. But there was a doctor who, I guess, hadn't heard of it. I shared it with the woman. She shared it with her doctor. They put it into practice. It's patient advocacy for yeah. them. That's, 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 the, that's the change right there. Teamwork is Patients what I like Patients change. To. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much. You're welcome. This is a good, informative video. Thank you.